What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode and uh, if you're watching this video and you've been on our channel before man this might be a little change of pace for the start of a video man they're usually used to uh, us already being at the track stuff's cars happening time. it's about time to go uh, dive into cars for hot laps but today we decided to take a minute and do something we should have done a long time ago meant but to do. yeah meant to do a long time ago we just haven't got around to do it. But it just so happens, Kevin came down today, swapped meet over at Joe's Speedway, so he came down. We got a little bit of time before our babysitting duties kick in, and we got to take care of the girls, so we decided we're going to do something you guys have asked. We've been getting a ton of messages. We've got Instagram messages. Kevin's got Facebook messages. We get comments on the video all the time. It always seems like everybody wants the same thing, dude. They want to know, what's the suspension setup? It's like stock. Stock. A lot of these guys, a lot of you guys... You know, they want, it's like back in the 90s, like that was kind of a popular kind of thing where we took trail machine, but still want to be able to go and mess around with a short course, but you don't want to beat yourself to death or be in a box to where like we are with our pro stock cars, where if right. you took it out in the trails, you would need a kidney belt you're you're done. a wheelchair after you're done. Right. Yeah, you know, so. So a lot of the viewers that we had or people that were following the channel, they caught on that prior to the beginning of this year when we were so fortunate to hook up with Mr. Scott Hewitt. Uh, just totally elevated our game uh, to another level. But before that, I think a lot of people caught on to the fact that we were running on stock valve shocks. So you were getting messages, I was getting messages. People wanted to know, like, hey, what are you guys doing to keep these cars handling like that? So we tried to answer as many questions as we could through messages, but we were getting comments and stuff, and people were like, hey, man, we want to see, like, some suspension setup videos and stuff. So that's what you're getting today. We're yeah, going to do a suspension we'll setup see. videos. we got a set of stock shocks on the bench. Uh, they do have a Weller dual rate spring kit on them, but we're going to talk a little bit about each one of those settings, how you can use them to uh, benefit you, uh, especially short courses. because that's what we know. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, our settings and how we ended up there, and a lot of this philosophy that we had on a lot of these setups was all Kevin's uh, from his years of, uh, of suspension setup, uh, but it all worked for us. So since we had so many messages, we decided we're going to pass it on to you, so that's what we're going to do today, and then we're going to go back later and we're going to watch some raw GoPro footage, uh, just let you guys watch both the cars run with this exact shock setup on there. And then we'll display all the settings on the screen. You guys can copy them down and use them. And that's what you've been asking for. And that's what we're going to give you. And then we'll also touch base on, because there's a lot of you guys out there that have the older machines that have the white progressive. Yeah, and don't have a dual rate setup. You don't need a dual rate setup, but it is beneficial if you, like, for two ways. One, if you're going to go short course and then turn around and change stuff and go back to where you were to go trail riding. That tender setup on there, I mean, you can make it run twice as plush as what it was with that right. white progressive stock spring on the 16, 17 models and yep. stuff. Right. Um, just doing that, we recommend doing that just because of ride quality, period, whether you're trail riding or racing, is just way better. But exactly. well, if you don't want to spend the money on that, you just want to keep it how you are, We'll go into what I did on mine to get with those springs to where it would actually jump somewhat flat. Yeah. Or not somewhat, but way flat. And even if you so. don't have the dual rate set up like this particular shock, it's a Bone Stocks 2017 shock. And even if you don't have the dual rate set up on there, a lot of the stuff that we're going to talk about here in a minute applies. still applies to you. And By you can lot. still make the car the best that you can be. And that's what you have to do. That's why we're going to put the video out there because me and Kevin weren't so lucky to have Scott Hewitt on our back, have our back uh, before last year. So we had to make do with what we had and we had pretty solid running cars. Our cars are way better than what they were, but if you guys are out there and you're running short course and you're looking to be the best you can be, we're going to help you out right now. Yep. So let's go over here and take a look at this shock. And, okay, go ahead. So what you're going to need right off the bat, if you're watching, or and in the garage, notepad, notepad something that you can keep somewhere to where you're not sitting there thinking oh crap man. you can use your phone whatever right. as long as you write down where you are currently if you want to go back to it or you get lost in the woods yeah like like setup wise not physically out in the woods I mean, right but, uh, <laughs> so i always down, i always so take a got. i always take a blank sheet of paper with me and i write high speed low speed compression and i write rebound and i wrote write a line for where my crossover's at, yep. and if I change anything, yep. I'll take a quick reference and I'll write down where I was at. That way if I change and I don't like it, I know exactly where I was and I can go back. So that's what Kevin's talking and about. Every it's, time you make an adjustment, right? Take now. good notes, basically. Yep. Take good notes. As Larry McReynolds would say in NASCAR, building that notebook. Build so, that notebook, that's so, right. 
All right, so here's our stock shot, like stock shot with the Weller dual rate short course setup. Um, for people that don't know, a lot of you guys do know what your suspension stuff are, and if you've got your owner's manual for your YXE, it goes through it too. But we'll do this. So down here at the bottom of your shock, this adjuster right here, so I dropped the shock. Um, that's your rebound. That's going to control when this thing gets compressed. The more you go to the plus side, which, which is more valving you're putting in, putting into it, or closing that jet off or whatever, the slower it's going to let that shock come back out. So and it's going to make the spring work harder. I think that's one thing that people get confused all the time with their, with their wording or how they say it. They talk about adding rebound and they think that they're going to speed up how fast the shock returns. Yeah. It's the opposite. If you add rebound, you're, you're going to slow down. You're closing it off. You're closing it off. You're going to slow down. So if you go clockwise direction on this setting that, that Kevin just pointed out, if you go clockwise on that and you go to the plus side of that, you're going to be slowing down how fast that shock shaft returns after it's been compressed. Right. Right. So since you have the front shock off of there, take a minute to tell everybody when you talk about rebound uh, on this front shock Kevin said like early on whenever we first started doing the short course thing Kevin's idea was let's put a ton of rebound in the front or take a, take a ton of rebound out oh, of the front and make stop. it return fast yep. and then we'll slow it down in the rear and the idea behind that was to almost wheelie the car off the face of the jump so and when you get in well, the face and it did work well and then here with the front like I say, you run it in, you put it at 11, like halfway. Uh, I would recommend um, at first, till you kind of like get it squared around, is run it probably all the way soft and then come back out like about eight clicks. And then you'll be able to tell if it's rebounding too hard because you'll feel it thump in the front end. That's a yeah. shock, just slamming yeah. full extension, which you don't, you want to get to the point to where that is not doing it and kind of like go from there. So, anyways, then we go into your compression. Big nut is your high speed compression now this is you only get four turns out of this um, from all the way soft to all the way stiff and then you got your uh, low speed which is the same way and it's a screwdriver slot right in here and that bigger nut on the outside is a 17 millimeter yes uh, wrench or socket or whatever will adjust you turn them you. independently because when you turn this big nut the screw on the inside will turn with it so don't worry about that um, so this is where we'll get into what we have as far as yeah I don't know what he's got on this I just you know we know what, what, what it works but whatever what I did what we recommend is you run your high-speed compression setting all the way until it bottoms out and then come yeah. off of that seat because you don't want to be completely closed off on a shock because right. it's just bad for it and then lightly seat it and then come back and then the same way with your low speed because the low speed is like you just cruising around yeah you know small bumps chop and stuff like that is where you're going to get your low speed. so like to put it in to put it into a uh, kind of a dumbed down version and there's we could go way deeper into this but to put it into like a dumbed down version think about how fast the shock would be compressed so like if you were on corner entry when the car low rolls speed. over slow you're you're going to be dealing with low speed compression if you're landing off a jump say you're bottoming out you're going to be dealing with high speed compression because the shock is being compressed at a higher higher rate of speed right. So that's the difference between high speed, low speed compression and where those settings might be applied to you. Exactly. So we just recommend like with the stock valving because it's not nowhere near stiff enough. Right. And like even with these, sometimes you think, you swear to God that even with built shocks, you're still not stiff enough. It's right. Just, yeah. You, know, it's just, you basically cannot be stiff. So if you're running on stock valve shocks, you're going to want to be max stiff for short course. For We're short talking course. short course. Not if, trail ride. Yeah. If you're, you're going to want to be max stiff on both those settings, no doubt. No doubt. All the time. So just run these into the lightly yep. seat and just come off them a little bit and leave them. So, yeah. On the on the spring preload, so you have two nuts up there. One's just a jam nut, and same with the crossover nut. One's supposed to be a jam nut. You just seen back in the 90s has one that's like loose, Kevin just spun around. But on the spring preload, so that's basically what forces the tire down into the dirt. Yeah. But because of short course racing, me and Kevin basically threw that out the window and used it for ride height. Yes. Because... Um, you know, you're dealing with stock valving, so then you got to use your springs to pick up the slack as far as that goes for your ride height and to get the thing to jump flat. I don't know what's going on out there, some, but I, I didn't do it this time. There's some, something's going, Someone, something's going somebody on. Somebody ran out of town. Right. <laughs> um, so anyway. Yeah, yeah we, we basically run our spring preload all the way up so that we 
basically the the shock is, as you can see I can basically turn the mainspring by hand and we run the spring preload nut up far enough just so to the point where when the car when the shocks fully extended and the car's off the ground we don't have any slop down here at the bottom because the spring can come off the perch but the farther you run your spring preload nuts up whether you have dual rate or you have the single or the, the progressive spring the white spring yep. you're still lowering ride height at that point so we basically threw out roll center and everything is yes lower, is lower gravity and, and that's what you're looking for in short course so regardless of what spring setup you have we threw that out the window we don't really use spring preload a bunch for for tuning purposes because we run them all the way up and get the ride height out and then we try and go look elsewhere right for, for everything else. for everything else because you want that ride height as low as you can get it and on a coil over shock like this this setting right here is the only way you can control your ride height unless you get into limit straps and stuff that's a whole nother topic we're not even going to get into that yeah and honestly it's a crush right Tried it. yeah uh, so kevin didn't talk a whole lot about the crossover uh, adjustment actually and this was one of his doings again his uh, philosophy that helped these cars tremendously because I was way out he's like hey try this real quick I got something in mind it's really gonna work so well I'm gonna go back over the bench when you're talking about the when he's talking about the crossover adjustment and this measurement down to the bottom where the slider would make contact with the yep. cross first crossover nut Kevin said this the cars are super soft we already know that so we're trying to eliminate as much body roll as we can. So he goes, let's put the crossover nuts as close to the slider as we can. And all that does is transfer weight off the tender spring onto the main. Yes. So he's like, let's do that as soon as we can. When the car enters a corner, bam, we'll plant it down onto the, the main. main spring. So we ended up really, really close on our crossover adjustment. And that's what that's going to do for you. That's going to transfer the weight off this tender spring, which you can see is way smaller. And it's going to compress a lot easier than what your main spring is. And it's going to transfer the weight from this spring and put it onto the main spring. And that's yep. going to help your corner entry. The faster that you can transfer the weight, Onto the main spring, off the tender spring, the stiffer the car is going to, the less body roll the car is going to have on corner and entry. And it's not going to be near as evil. You know? Right. So, and then you're also going to be at your lowest point that you can get the car with that spring stiff. Okay, so now that everybody knows, or you've talked a little bit about what the settings are and how they can be applied, what they do, how they can help you, all that stuff, let's go back and watch a couple raw GoPro clips. I'll just put some up of like my car, your car, back when they were running on these exact springs. Play a couple of those clips. You can watch the cars from not only just GoPro clips, but clips of the races. Like we got certain clips of them jumping and handling and doing all that stuff. Even though a lot of you guys already know that because that's why you ask the questions. But we're going to put them up there anyways. And then when we come back, uh, we'll talk about the actual measurement. <laughs>
Well, Kevin was outside using the urinal uh, for a quick second there because, uh, you know, he hasn't sweated out all of his bodily fluids yet in here. Dude, how hot is how hot's the garage? It's 85 outside and humid, and it's probably another 10 degrees hotter in here. Dude. Easy. Yeah. That, air. <laughs> that forehead looks greasy. It is. It Anyways, okay, Everybody's we're back. Running down. So we come back, and there's only one thing left to do. We're going to close this video out, keep it as short as we can. Um, Kevin's going to pull some measurements. So we already told you guys that you're going to want to be uh, closed off, uh, both of these. Uh, when we say closed off, if you don't have uh, the sticker still on there, you're going to be talking about in the clockwise direction. Yes. Uh, on both of these settings. Uh, closed off and then backed off just a hair so you're not tight on them. And that's going to make both your high speed and low speed compression um, max stiff. All four corners. And then all four corners. And then Kevin is going to go through and pull a measurement on the spring preload. Uh, on the crossover nut and then like we told you earlier we were 11 clicks out on the rebound on the fronts and we'll get to the rears in a minute we were 11 clicks out 11 clicks um, out yep oh, so we don't even need yeah to we don't even do that we did the ma the uh, max stiff on the high speed low speed compression you know what the rebound is all right it's 11 clicks uh, max stiff high speed and low speed the only thing we didn't actually do yet is actually pull tape and I think you started to but you didn't finish on the spring preload so we were three and three eighths from the shock body to the top of the spring. Yep. On the on the overall preload, and then to the bottom of the lower um, crossover nut, where the slider would actually make contact with the yeah, first. Yeah, where the slider was going to hit it. It's at seven and three eighths. Seven and three eighths. So that was seven and three eighths on the crossover and three and three eighths on the three and three preload. eighths on the spring preload down to the spring. From, from here, from there, right? Okay, yeah. and that's the front spring. I'll put that. I'll put that information up on the screen so you guys yep. can either pause the video or do whatever you want to do. And then Kevin's gonna pull the tape on the uh, rears here real quick. Same shock in the rear. I don't know if you mentioned this. You probably did, but same shock on the rear. It's just a little yeah, bit same, bigger. It's a little longer. Same shock uh, setup. Same, same idea behind it though. But so now at this we are at five and eleven sixteenths overall preload on the rear shock. And then two, line this up here. And then from the top to the bottom, same thing to the bottom of that preload nut, on the lower preload nut where your crossover is going to hit it, you're at nine and a half inches. Okay. So. And then we ended up three turns out, three clicks out on the rear. From full stiff. <clears throat> well, three clicks out from full, from, from full in on the uh, rebound. Okay. So we were three clicks out, and then again, he said, like Kevin said earlier, we were max stiff on all four corners on the high speed and low speed compression, and then we were three clicks out, uh, and like we said earlier, uh, that was that was to try and slow the rear down and keep that rear end from bucking, which is a big problem on the WAG-Z, and I think we combated that pretty good yeah, uh, what, by doing that had, for what we had. So, good as it'll get. Yeah. So anyways, um, real quick video, not a whole lot of action. Uh, in this video like normally but it's uh, you guys been asking us for it so uh, that's what we did and comment on this video if you want to see more stuff like this if you want to see us get more in detail with these shock setup uh, spend a little bit more time on a particular thing uh, that we do let us know we'll do it we'll, we'll definitely do it Scott Hewitt's information up on there um, he will sell you exactly what we have or what we're currently running um, if you want the setup that me and Kevin run on every one of these videos Call Scott Hewitt, and he no. will send you what we have. And, and let me tell you, sheets. I will tell you this, it'll change your game. I exactly. promise you that. And, um, yeah, I forgot what the hell else I was going to say about that. Um, hmm. I'm sure it'll come to me in the middle of the night. Yeah. Well, anyways, he was going to say, call Scott Hewitt for the prime setup. But but what we don't, wanna, what, what we don't want to uh, miss on is what we made this video for, and that's for you guys that are out there scratching and digging every week and don't have the money to go out and pay for that kind of shock setup yeah scott it hewitt took us it's, to it took us point. it took us many years to hook up with scott hewitt do i recommend scott hewitt work absolutely i do but if you're out there racing you're gonna have to do what me and kevin did for many years and that was scratch and dig and make the cars the best that we could make them every single week and we just told you guys exactly how we did it and you just got how many what two three full seasons of racing to get to where we were and we just give it to you yep so don't give up on it man if you're out there racing short course and them guys are racing with you and they're out there uh you know the fast cars all have you know custom valve shocks 
Hey, don't give up. Go out there and get after We've them. We've been accused of having built this, that, yep. the other, and cheating, and yeah. doing whatever. And our motors, if you watch the last, are still bone stock. All if you watch the last episode, Kevin just held off a pretty gnarly pack of pro stock cars uh, with all custom shock valving, with stock valving. So our cars were on point, the best they could be, and that's where you guys need to be. So. Right. As always, we don't say this enough, man. I, we forget on episodes. We get all jacked up. We forget on episodes. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Our numbers, say it every time, still going up. Still going up. They're still going up. We made this one for you. You guys were asking for it. We give it to you. So when we come back, I never have any idea where the heck we're going to be. What the heck, where are we going to be at? What are we going to be doing? W. Rolling W. September 11th. That's right. 11th September 11th. We have not been there this year. Nope. Uh, it's going to be some good racing. Mudlark crew, Mudlark crew will be up there. Uh, I think actually, he, I think he's planning on running this route oh, really? stock at a big money race. Oh, that's I don't know. No, I dude, I don't like that's I don't like to hear that. I was hoping to, we had such a good battle with him. I was hoping to that we he would might, square off know. against I'll him. I don't know. Yeah, see if you'll skip out on that, but we'll yeah. see. But anyway, uh, we'll be back um, September 11th and 12th, two day show. We'll have a band there. Yeah, supposed they, to. Supposed to. They or they normally do on their two day weekend, but uh, that's where we'll be uh, next time. Next time we hook up, so. Unless Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys up say there. Say you want something else. We got time in between. We'll make another video. We got some time. Yeah. We got some time. Let us know what you want to see. All right. Later. See you guys.